and uh, announce the next talk. It's uh, Yao, Yao Qing or Yao, Yao Qing Wu. I don't know if I pronounced it right. Uh, Yao Qing, where did you go? There you are. And he's going to talk about fast incremental fib aggregation. And I think this is really interesting from a standpoint of um, you know, route table bloat and things like that. Are there ways we can reduce the fib size? So. So hello, everyone. My name is Yao Qing Liu, uh, a fifth year PhD student from the University of, M University of Memphis. Uh, my advisor is Dr. Lan Wang. We collaborate with Dr. B. Chuan Zhang from the University of Arizona. And uh, today, my presentation topic is fast incremental fiber aggregation, uh, also called FIFA. Uh, notice this is not the International Football Association name, but our algorithm name. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to uh, cover uh, motivation, the fiber aggregation overview, the update handling, uh, the um, evaluation, uh, the operational impact, and uh, finally, the conclusion. So first, uh, motivation. So the uh, left picture shows the main components inside the rotor. So uh, as we know, uh, the rotor, uh, the rib is uh, mainly um, responsible for collecting all the best rods and uh, download, uh, download them into the FIP located on the line card. And also it handles all the updates and uh, downloads the FIP changes, uh, all the re re uh, routing changes to the line card. So, uh, but uh, right, uh, nowadays um, in the right picture, as you can see, um, the uh, rate of growth of the a rib has been over linear rate since 2004. So uh, since we know the FIB is derived from the rib, so the, that makes the FIB um, very big, and the large FIB uh, then may not fit the FIB memory um, anymore, but uh, due to the fast lookup and the forwarding requirement, the FIB memory is very expensive, and uh, it would cost ISP or um, customers a lot to do the upgrade um, for the hardware, for the line card, uh, or for the rotor. So we proposed uh, FIB aggregation, which is a local, low cost and a software solution to reduce the FIB size. Uh, uh, so uh, why local, low cost is important? Because ISPs are reluctant to uh, deploy solutions with a high cost and with a lot of uh, um, parties involved in, and uh, also uh, this protocol, uh, not protocol, actually this algorithm doesn't need to change any routing protocol uh, currently deployed in the network. So this is just a local uh, decision. And the motivation too, uh, actually there, there are some uh, existing works, including our previous work, uh, focus on uh, reducing the fib size, uh, the rib size or fib size by as much as 70%. Uh, however, in this in this work, we also focus on reducing uh, the overall overhead for the aggregation. So the most challenging job in this uh, uh, incremental fib aggregation is not the one-time aggregation itself, but the update handling, because we have to apply all those uh, updates. Uh, to the aggregate FIB, but uh, meanwhile maintain the very good compression ratio. So uh, the objectives uh, in our work are first, of course, ex extend the line card. Uh, our objective is five years at least, and uh, also we want to reduce the uh, overall update handling time and the total number of FIB changes, also the uh, fib burst. So what is fib aggregation? Uh, actually, one sentence explanation is to mod, uh, merge multiple fib entries into one. So for example, we can aggregate five entries in the original fib into three as shown in the aggregate fib. So we proved and verified they have uh, 
100% forwarding uh, the same forwarding behaviors before and after the aggregation. So, uh, uh, so we propose the FIFA model. Uh, first, let's see the normal oper oper uh, the operation in a, in a rotor. So as you can see, if there are any rot changes, uh, they will be downloaded into the FIB located on the line card directly. And we designed this algorithm. Uh, we plugged one module between RIB and FIB and in a control plane. So if there are any rot change right now, the uh, first will be handled by the FIFA module, and then the FIFA module just uh, download the effective ones into the line card. So uh, we propose three fast, uh, fast incremental FIFA aggregation algorithm uh, based on improved ORTC. Uh, ORTC, um, also called the optimal routing uh, table constructor, uh, the original ORTC was first proposed in 1999 uh, using a binary tree, and uh, it needs three passes over the binary tree to get the one-time aggregation, uh, optimal aggregation results. And uh, there's no updated handling for this algorithm. So we made two contrib uh, main contributions in our work. First, it, we improved the ORTC using Patria chart, which is a op uh, space-optimized uh, try and uh, we only use two passes to finish the same task um, as the original RTC does. And uh, right now it's 2.5 times faster and uh, it only takes 44% uh, of the original memory. And uh, uh, they keep the strong forwarding coordinates. Uh, the second um, contribution is we propose three fast incremental uh, update handling algorithm. The first one is we call FIFA S. This algorithm is the optimal size update handling algorithm for each update. Uh, it maintains a global optimi optimality. For example, for each update, uh, it always keeps the smallest FIP size and no re aggregation. And uh, for the uh, FIFA T is the minimal time update, update handling algorithm. So this algorithm is the fastest one, but uh, since more and more updates are coming in, the FIB size may not maintain the optimal one, so we have to set a threshold for this one. So this one needs uh, uh, re aggregation. And similarly, uh, for uh, FIFA H, um, this is a hybrid, hybrid update handling algorithm. So in this algorithm, uh, we pick the two um, uh, features from S and T, and uh, there's no re aggregation, and uh, it has small, uh, small FIB size, uh, FIB changes. So um, first, let me uh, roughly go through the ORTC Im implementation, uh, just give you a, a big picture of how we did the aggregation. First, uh, as you can see uh, in the left table, uh, we have the original FIB entries, so we load those entries uh, into a, a binary tree or try, and uh, uh, since I mentioned ORTC needs three passes. So the first pass is a, a top-down process to normalize all the, uh, all the leaf nodes. And uh, so each uh, normalized node will get the same nest hop as the same as its nearest ancestors. Uh, so like this. And uh, the second pass is a, a bottom-up post-order um, process to merge nest hops. So, um, for, so that, that means in each, in each node, we have to maintain a set of nest hops. So as you can see, um, the results. And uh, the third pass for what you see is to select the nest hop from the root of the tree it is a top-down process. So uh, finally, after the uh, three passes, uh, we only pick the effective nodes that is shown in the green nodes. So they will be uh, loaded uh, onto the aggregate FIP. And uh, actually, it has the same forwarding behavior as the original one. So uh, I roughly uh, go th uh, went through the uh, aggregation. 
and uh, let me introduce the update handling. So first, uh, uh, the update handling without any aggregation. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, a pr new prefix uh, announcement coming in, 141.225 slash 18 with next hop three. And uh, if in a, in, a, uh, in a tree, actually one node will be generated. And uh, this, uh, the prefix will be downloaded into the FIP. Um, so as you can see, the relationship between one uh, rib update and uh, uh, one, uh, the, the FIP change is one to one relationship. So one FIP up, uh, rib update, one FIP change, or one affected node. But uh, if we apply the same update to the aggregate FIP, it has a different story. So that means one rib update may trigger uh, multiple FIP changes, or a, a lot uh, multiple nodes will be get affected. I will use the uh, FIS, uh, FIFIS uh, update handling as an example. So the left, uh, the left tree is the aggregate uh, FIP, as shown in previous slides. And uh, so right now we up update, uh, we apply the same update to this uh, try, and uh, uh, this, this algorithm will keep the global optimality. So multiple nodes will be get affected. In this example, uh, for example, three nodes will get affected, F, H, and G but uh, only the effective one, G, actually, finally will be downloaded into the FIB, every FIB. So it has the same forwarding behavior as the original uh, update, uh, update one. So um, uh, for T and uh, H, uh, they have the similar properties. So um, I just skip it, but uh, uh, I want to give you a straightforward example to show the differences between the three algorithms. So finally, I got one that is a iron spring example. So for example, I have, a, uh, I have the uh, FIFA S algorithm and I have a original uh, spring. So uh, the original sp uh, spring represents the original FIP size. So for the first step, we apply the improved ORTC to the uh, original FIP, and we got the optimal uh, or smallest FIP size. And for each update, uh, each atom after that, afterwards are the updates, um, the results for each update. And as you can see, for each update, the FIP always keep the smallest FIP size. So let's see uh, uh, FIFA T. So at the very beginning, they have the same original FIP size, and uh, uh, things, uh, more and more, uh, this, is, uh, this algorithm will keep a local optimality, so when more and more updates are coming in, we, uh, the FIP size will be, uh, go back, will be going back to the original FIP size, so we have to set a threshold to control the FIP size. Uh, but the, the first step is the same, we, we need to apply the same um, algorithm, uh, improve RTC, and uh, so when more and more uh, updates are coming in, actually the FIP size will get loose and, uh, until a threshold is reached. So once the threshold is reached, the, the, the threshold can be, uh, can, uh, be uh, I mean, a memory, a memory limit. You have a, your uh, memory limit, and you can set the threshold for that. And uh, once the threshold is reached, uh, the algorithm will push the um, aggregate this, this FIP size back to the optimal using re -aggregation. Notice that each re only requires uh, 0.2 seconds, and uh, so on and so forth. This, that re will uh, down periodically. Uh, so for uh, FIFA H, uh, before the threshold is reached, it has the same operations as FIFA T, but uh, in, order, in order to avoid the re instead of uh, pushing the FIP size back to the optimal, the smallest FIP size, we, we just, uh, the algorithm just uh, push it uh, under the threshold. And when more and more updates are coming in, the algorithm, uh, the FIP size will uh, go back uh, about, about the threshold. So, will uh, do the push again, so on and so forth. 
but no reagation. So, uh, so right now you may get a big picture of the differences of the three algorithms. So uh, I'm going to talk, uh, talk about our evaluation, evaluation methodology and uh, the evaluation results. So first, uh, our data uh, were from the uh, Rotview project, Reptable, and Updates from uh, January 1st, 2011 to December 31st, 2011. And uh, we use this peer because this peer has the most AS hops. Uh, so generally, uh, the, more AS, or the more AS hops number, um, the more difficult to do the aggregation. So that also indicates that we are estimating the worst case. So we did some data pre-processing. We filter out all duplicate update messages. And uh, in, two in the end of 2011, um, uh, all the year, uh, there are uh, about 54 million updates. And uh, we use uh, the Nest AS hop as the Nest hop. So we did the experiment on a normal desktop. Uh, we use four metrics uh, to do the evaluation. The most important and straightforward one is the FIB size, the total number of um, entries in the aggregate FIB. The second one is the time cost, the, the, total, uh, the, topo, the total update handling time. And the third one is the total number of FIB changes. As I mentioned before, one RIB update may, not, uh, may cost multiple uh, FIB changes, so we need uh, the total number of FIB changes. And uh, also FIB burst. So we want to get a distribution of, uh, for example, how many um, RIP updates cost uh, uh, zero. Uh, this, this value can be zero, since um, some uh, FIB updates may be uh, duplicate or covered. So um, how many relationship is one to zero? How many is one to one? How many is one to 10? Something like that. So I'll go through them one by one. Uh, first, the FIB size. So the top red line represents the original FIB size without any aggregation. You can see in the end of 2011, there are about uh, 308,000 uh, uh, FIB entries, and the, the, the red line at the bottom is the um, results for uh, FIFA S. So you can see in the end of 2011, it's about, uh, it's about 150,000. So uh, about um, more than 60% uh, FIB entries have been aggregated. And uh, uh, so uh, for the FIB, uh, FIFA T and H, uh, we have to set a threshold. We set a threshold as uh, 180,000. Um, so the blue line represents the results for FIFA T. Uh, as you can see, it will periodically do uh, the, does the reagation, and uh, there were um, nine reagations in 2011, and each reagation is about 0.2 seconds. And the black line uh, is the FIFA H results. So as you can see, before the threshold is reached, it has, same FIB, uh, it has the same FIB size as the FIFA T. But once the threshold is reached, so it will, the FIB size will stay around the threshold and no reaggregation. So uh, overall, the aggregation can uh, aggregate more than 50% of the FIB entries. So that, the second metric is the time. So the bottom uh, black line represents the normal updates without aggregation. Uh, the, uh, the update is about one, point, uh, one uh, microsecond per update. So the blue line represents the uh, FIFA T results. It's about 1.2 micro, microsecond per update. And for the FIFA, uh, FIFA H, it's about 1.9 second per update. Even for the optimal one, uh, for the smallest FIFA size one, it's about two microsecond per update. From the results, as you can see, they are affordable. So the third uh, metric, FIB changes, the total number of FIB changes. And uh, uh, for the, the bottom black line is the updates for normal, for, uh, normal updates without any aggregation. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship, right? So one change per update. 
So for the FIFA T results, it's about 1.1 change per, per update. And uh, FIFA H is about 1.2 changes per update. So even for the optimal one, it's a, about 1.8 second per update. So from the results, you can see they are all acceptable. So the last one is the FIFA burst. So first, uh, uh, from the category of uh, uh, less than or equal to one category, you can see most uh, rib updates actually cost zero or one FIP changes. And uh, about 99% uh, of the rib updates cost less than 10 uh, FIP changes in the category less than or equal to 10 category. We also ob observe that in FIFA uh, S and uh, uh, H, the heaviest fee burst is about 500 and 1100 uh, fee changes, uh, respectively. And uh, the FIFA T, uh, the fee burst, usually uh, very small, but uh, it could be very large because that reaggregation. Uh, so, you can pick the one fit for you. So, uh, summary. Uh, from FIFA size, you can see uh, FIFA S is the best. From the uh, time cost, uh, FIFA T is the best. From the uh, FIFA uh, changes, FIFA T is the best. And from the um, FIFA burst, uh, FIFA S is the best. And from the reaggregation perspective, FIFA S and H are the best. So there's no silver bullet, right? Um, so what's the benefit? Uh, our conclusion is that we, we can extend the rotor life or the line car life more than five years, up to seven years. So we use the history data to uh, get this conclusion. For example, remember in the end of 2011, uh, the optimal FIB size uh, is about 150. So if we map this uh, results to the uh, history uh, trend of the FIB size, we are back to 2005. So even we are using the threshold one, uh, T and H, actually we are back to 2006. So that, that means if, we, uh, if one rotor or line car that were supposed to be replaced in 2005 or six can be used till now. So what is the operational impact? So uh, of course you need to maintain uh, the aggregate FIP in the uh, uh, main memory, I mean in the control plane. And uh, for each algorithm, you have to pay the corresponding time and FIP changes and the uh, FIP burst as I, uh, my analysis um, before. So the conclusion uh, from benefits, actually we can extend the rotor's lifetime for more than five years, and uh, they have small overhead uh, from the time FIP changes. And uh, the cost is that, uh, I mean the cost is for, for all update, uh, I mean the FIP aggregation algorithm, it's not only ours. Uh, you need additional memory in the control plane, and uh, uh, you need to handle the fib burst. So uh, these are some references, um, including some of our previous work. And uh, this work was supported by NS Grant, and uh, we also thank, um, want to thank Professor Li Xiaozhang from UCLA for her insightful comments. And uh, all right, so uh, I'm, uh, if you are interested in my research or uh, you think I may be one of your, uh, I mean the right person of one of your openings, um, please let me know since I'm going to graduate soon. Uh, my contact uh, email address, yru6 at memphis.edu. Thank you, I'm happy to take your questions. Jeff has Juniper Networks. Mm -hmm. For your aggregation statistics, are your next stops taking into account BGP equal cost multipath? 
uh, we have we didn't consider any multiple cost. So right now we only consider one single AS hop. So I would suggest that your statistics are a little optimistic given that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And another question. Microphones are still open. We have some minutes for questions. Go ahead, Rudy. Rudy oh, Volk, Deutsche Telekom. Um, looking at your evaluation of your gain, um, I'm missing a little bit caveats about, uh, well, okay, uh, how the estimated gains may be off from what's going to be experienced. First of all, uh, well, I could, um, uh, the question is, uh, quite obviously, you are assuming there are no IBGP rules. Uh, in the following table, actually, um, one prefix corresponding one less hop, so uh, it doesn't matter, I mean, uh, uh, IBGP or... Well, I have, I have, I have a significant percentage of my routes that I'm, that, that I have to feed into the FIB that are actually internal, IBGP, and never will show up in root views. Mm. And very likely are not being aggregatable in good ways. That's, that's, that's probably, that's probably taking away uh, from the estimate of uh, uh, how, how, much, how much you can gain. Uh, the other thing, of course, is uh, at least a caveat should be in place that, well, okay, um, uh, well, you did, you did uh, an estimation, well, okay, you, 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 you evaluated your gain from a single um, from a single uh, time, uh, oops. A single desktop, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, snapshot of the routing table. Uh, I mean, for example, when, when we uh, did the evaluation, first we pick up, uh, pick the uh, routing table in, at the very beginning of 2011, and uh, then we get the, all the updates of the whole year and uh, we apply all these updates to the table. So it's not a, sc a screenshot. Uh, you, so that so means... You, you, so, you, so you ran the aggregation from on the table of uh, 2005 and uh, of this, uh, of today? Uh, for, uh, the, no, uh, I mean, uh, I picked the table, for example, uh, January 1st, 2011, and that is the static okay, so table. And we apply all these updates afterwards. And we got the results of the whole year. Yes, so mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of the assumption that the aggregation, uh, well, okay, the, the ability to aggregate, uh, you are projecting from today into the next five or seven years. Yeah. That probably should be, should be worth a caveat because, well, okay, uh, the way how addresses are split and being aggregatable today uh, is not really sure to be the same in five years' time. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, actually, uh, in another work, we did uh, the evaluation um, from 2001, if I uh, am right, to 2010. We, f we found that actually the aggregation uh, ratio uh, is uh, better and better. I mean, we can aggregate more and more. Uh, I think due to there are more and more, more specific uh, prefix in the table. Thank you. Any other questions? Actually, I have a quick question. Um, do you, Michael Sinatra, ESNet, I have a quick question. Do you, um, have you actually implemented this in any kind of router, like a like some sort of open flow route server or anything like that, uh -huh. or are you planning to? The question is no, and uh, that's one motivation we uh, come up here to ask your support about this uh, uh, this uh, algorithm. So if you are interested in this research, yeah, please contact me. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.